during the few years that followed, the Republican Party, the anti-slavery, the anti-South Republicans, firmly controlled both Congress and the White House. Their action over the next several years was to pass and ratify the 13th, 14th, and 15th Amendments to the Constitution. The 13th Amendment was very simple. It outlawed forever the institution of slavery. The 15th Amendment was simple on the surface. It guaranteed all citizens the right to vote. We say simple on the surface because in reality most black and Hispanic and Native American citizens didn't see the enforcement of their voting rights until the successful civil rights movement of the 1960s, a century later. But it is the 14th Amendment that had, and still has, the greatest impact on life in the United States. It is sometimes called the Equal Protection Amendment. It says several things. First, all persons born or naturalized in the United States are citizens of the United States and of the state in which they reside. This put an end to the old Southern argument that slaves, or even free blacks, were not citizens. Then, a state cannot make or enforce any law abridging, that means restricting, the privileges or immunities of our citizens. And then one of the most important things in the Constitution, it reads, quote, nor shall any state deprive any person of life, liberty, or property without due process of law, nor deny any person within its jurisdiction the equal protection of the law. Due process of law, equal protection of laws. It means they can't just take away your life, your liberty, or your property without following a system of laws and courts and that everyone has to be treated the same under the law. But see something interesting. Here, first it defines what a citizen is, and then it says a citizen's privileges cannot be abridged. But note the rest of the sentence. Nor shall any state deprive any person of life, liberty, or property without due process of law, nor deny to any person within its jurisdiction the equal protection of the law. The word there is person, not citizen. The rights of due process and equal protection apply to all persons in the United States, whether they are citizens or not, even if they are visiting from another country, or even whether or not they are here legally. It doesn't mean that a non-citizen or an illegal gets special treatment. Rather, the same treatment. Whatever action you might face from government, law enforcement, or courts, it has to follow the due process of the laws, and that process has to protect all persons equally. Remember the alternative. Think back to our discussions about the slave codes. A slave could be killed with no questions asked, or an absolutely free black person could have been accused of being a fugitive slave arrested and have no right to his day in court. Section 2 says congressional representation is based on a count, a census, of the population. What that means is that the old three-fifths compromise is out. African Americans or other minorities are whole persons. There are a couple of other sections of the 14th Amendment, but the one that is particularly interesting relates to money. Basically, it says the U.S. and state governments will not assume or pay any of the South's Civil War debts, nor for the loss of property. When you look at the 14th Amendment, as well as in conjunction with the 13th and 15th Amendment, it was the largest redistribution of property in history. Huge millions and millions of dollars, which would today be worth billions of dollars, of property were taken away from one group of people in order to allow for the emancipation of other people. That property being the slaves. That property being the slaves. Any program that people complain about today, any welfare program, even anything that the Soviet Union did during the time of the Russian Revolution pales in comparison to that redistribution of property for a social goal. 
and one needs to read the Constitution if you want to do this originalism analysis, which is read the Constitution as the framers intended. You must account for the framers of the 13th, 14th, and 15th Amendments, which is called progressive originalism and allows for a much broader scope and understanding of the role of government in the securing of individual liberty. The new president, Andrew Johnson, was not in the mold of Abraham Lincoln. So you've got a man who comes in the White House because of an assassin's bullet, Andrew Johnson, a slaveholder, a Tennessean, who before long has no qualms, no problem at all with the restoration of white supremacy in the South. Uh, this is more than many Republicans, radical, moderate, whatever, could, could swallow. The idea that you could have fought four years to reconstruct the Union and to abolish slavery only to see white Southerners try to turn back the clock to 1860 once more was simply too much for a lot of people to take. Regardless of Johnson's views, the North undertook what was called Reconstruction. It wasn't about fixing the physical wreckage. It was about that business of Union Army occupation of former Confederate states, meant to protect former slaves. It was resented by many Southern whites, and as years went on, it was not even all that popular among whites in the North. Reconstruction continued for the better part of 12 years, and how it ended was based on sheer politics. The election of 1876 saw Republican Rutherford B. Hayes of Ohio running against Samuel Tilden, the Democrat. Tilden was not a Southern old Confederate type Democrat. He was from New York and a millionaire businessman at that. Well, in the general election, Tilden actually won the popular vote, the first Democrat to do so since the Civil War. Hayes, the Republican, woke up that morning pretty much accepting defeat. But in a few southern congressional districts, the electoral college votes were in dispute. Certain southern Democrats were in a position to cast those electoral votes however they wanted. So in the ultimate smoke-filled backroom deal, these southern Democrats said to Ohio Republican Hayes, we'll make you the next president in return for you getting rid of Reconstruction and sending home those northern occupation troops. They say in politics, an honest politician is one who stays bought. And Rutherford B. Hayes did just that. He won the Electoral College by one vote. And in a few months into his term as president, Reconstruction was ended.